federations take hundreds of years to level up to the maximum level of five. And guess what? There's an achievement to get a max level federation because of course there is. So I thought it would be a uh, fun to try and get this achievement as quick as possible using the in-game years. This idea is all thanks to a new change to the diplomacy tradition. And of course, me completely abusing and breaking it. If you're wanting this achievement, this is the best way to get it. However, if you're not planning on getting achievements, that's fine. You can sit back, relax, and guess how long it takes while I sit there and break the game while getting two other Federation achievements alongside this main one. This is all while I slowly grind away and torture myself getting all 179 Slaris achievements. It's never ending. So what exactly are these achievements that we're going for? Well, we've already got Establish a Federation, but we still have three other Federation achievements that I'd love to get from this list. The speed run is to be the leader of a max level Federation, and then we can actually combine this run with getting all eight ethics represented within our Federation. Here is the build. We're starting with Egalitarian, Xenophile, and Spiritualist. And then, of course, we can actually lot spawn empires by clicking twice on the bird so that these empires always spawn. We've made them awful with no civics traits and giving them the other ethics that we don't have. So this empire evil is xenophobe militarist materialist and then pacifism rocks a lithoid who has pacifism authoritarian and spiritualist making up all eight ethics. The reason they're as bad as possible is because we're going to vassalize them to force them to join our great federation which is the easiest way of getting this achievement because sometimes people just hate you. So the main aim of this build is to level up our federation as quickly as possible. We've gone common ground because it starts us with a federation at halfway level two. There is hegemony that you could have picked. The common ground lets you pick the spiritualist type federation, which is the only federation type that actually helps leveling up a federation. They just give you more cohesion at level two. The settings are going to be the most important part. We've gone for two AI empires, which we're obviously spawning in. Then we're going to be playing at the large galaxy type. This is because we want as many systems as possible. We'll get on to why exactly later on in the video, but also we don't want too big that we can't find that we're spawning in. No fallen empires, no more order empires. This is crucial. We don't want anything in our way. Lowest tech and tradition, because why not? Very important. Max habitable worlds. This is a must. No pre-sapience or civilizations. No crisis. Civilian difficulty, because it's the only difficulty that gives you buffs. AI aggressiveness low, so they don't kill each other. Hyperlean density a little bit lower, so that we can try and lock our Federation members in. Then everything else normal. And Iron Man mode, obviously on. You might be wondering, why is this video a little bit different? Well, I messed up my audio. So here we are. This is the second of three videos where I'll be doing a post-commentary style so that your ears don't bleed when you listen to these videos. Don't worry about it. Here is our spawn. It's actually quite good because our Federation members are quite far behind us. So we can try and trap them. So we're going to instantly survey ahead of them. Who cares about that system behind? And then we'll send the construction ship off to follow. So importantly, this speedrun is based on the years. Unlike the last speedrun where we used time, we're doing years in-game because we don't have to keep resetting the run. So we now get to specialize our Federation. We're going to take the spiritualist version, which is the Holy Covenant. When it spawns, we're actually starting at halfway leveled, which is quite nice. And here at level two, you can see envoys assigned to the Federation will provide 50% more cohesion and increase spiritual ethic attraction within our empire. We only really care about the cohesion because that means when we add vassals later on, it's going to be quicker to get back up to max cohesion so we can keep getting max XP. And what we've done is assigned whoever was on our capital to be a delegate so that we can level this Federation up as quick as possible. The more cohesive you are, the more XP you get, which means you can level up your Federation quicker. And then we're instantly going to start improving relations with our two Federation members. This is to make sure they vote the way we want them to vote because we will need to change laws in the Federation. Uh, the great thing about this origin, we all start with diplomacy, which is exactly what we need to break the game. As when we finish it, we get monthly Federation XP gain plus two, which is quite decent. We're hoping that our Federation members finish this too so that we can get plus six XP. It would be really nice if we could get more people with this tradition. Well, whenever you make a vassal, they get your traditions. So if we finish diplomacy and make vassals, we get an extra two XP per vassal. The idea is to spam as many vassals as possible, as quickly as possible to get as much XP as possible. This is why we're improving relations so that we can switch Kent subjects join to yes. At the minute it's minus 49, but we'll make them like us. We're grabbing Xenolinguistics straight away. This is a nice benefit to the origin too. We're going to get a small amount of influence that we can try and block our Federation members in. So then we can just do what we want to the galaxy. We're also going to need a lot of influence because you can only make a sector five jumps away from another sector capital. The initial start of this is going to be very influence heavy. 
We're going to spam science ships out so that we can find new planets. And that's why we've got parliamentary systems because we'll get factions straight away and faction unity gain goes up. We're also going to want to pump our alloys as much as possible so that we can get our power projection up as quickly as possible, which will give us a bit more influence. Power projection is essentially how much naval courage you have of your empire size. We need half of our size, which for 50 empire size is 25. If the AI ever asks you for agreements, say no. It costs influence to upkeep research agreements and we're already losing influence because we're in a federation and that's the only diplomatic pack I'll allow. Our factions have now come in. We're going to promote the biggest approval already so that we can just try and get everyone to like us in one faction. Then we'll do any missions that they want. Empty shells is to ban robots. That's fine. We go over to government, go to robotic workers, and just outlaw them. This faction want benevolent subjugation policy? Sure, why not? Now they'll all like us, and they'll just give us a little bit more unity as their factions grow. So we're getting our second science ship out as quickly as possible so we can survey the new system. We need to block them in, and then we'll buy 10 alloys as well. And sell our food, and then buy some minerals so that we can build up our capital. And why not sell our excess consumer goods? So embassies can now give us unity, which is huge early on since we have two embassies with our federation members. We also want to get to eminent diplomats so that we can get plus five diplomatic acceptance and improving relations have a chance of acquiring favors. It's going to be huge to manipulate the Federation laws. So we have found a planet here, but it's unfortunately within five jumps. So it's pretty useless to us. Maybe we can use it to build up our empire, but we can't do our abuse yet. So we are just trying to rush down diplomacy finishing too. As you can see from our Federation, we're only getting 0.88 XP because our cohesion is a bit low, but plus two XP. That's how good it is. Diplomacy is now finished. We're going to take interstellar dominion because starbase influence cost is reduced we found another planet not five jumps away so we keep exploring i should have put veneration and saints on earlier just for a bit more unity gain and it's pretty much free to activate because it's below our edict gap but oh well we're actually keeping expansionists on because it gives less outpost build cost and we can go to militarize economy for more alloys expansion next because it will reduce starbase cost and colony development speed's actually going to be quite nice in this run well we're going to take it okay we can build our outpost here and we'll survey up ahead because my ai friends can actually leave leapfrog a starbase to then build past there. Once they have to go tour systems over, they won't bother building. That's how you reduce any border gore if you're bordering an AI. As you can see, we're at 4 XP now because we have the tradition finished and our cohesion is growing. Everyone's got representatives in. I wish our cohesion was growing a bit quicker, but it's fine. It's a little tip if you need a bit more influence. You can actually make empty ships, remove guns, remove the shields, armor, and this will reduce the cost by half of a corvette, and it still counts towards naval coverage for power projection. So I'm going to start spamming those out with any alloys that we've gained. We've got expansion finished. We're going to go share destiny for more envoys so that we can steal all the favors from our friends. So something that's going to weigh us down a lot is influence. Domination is actually one of the only traditions that can give influence from colonial viceroys. So we're obviously going to go for that. Okay, our cohesion is maxed. We're also getting plus six from Harmonious Accord, which means our two other Federation members have finished the diplomacy tradition. So we get plus 10 XP from max cohesion. And we're getting the six from the tradition. But this number is going to go crazy later on in the game. They also love us and we're the leader of the Federation. So we're going to extend the years of succession to 40 years. Remember, we do need to be in charge of the max level Federation. So it's important that we do the laws so that we stay in charge. 0.5 influence is here. We're slowly gaining up. We're up to four. And we've just got Federation level unlocked, which is an achievement. Six years in, one achievement down. Let's keep going. Each Federation level also increases as we go. So we really need to get way more XP gain if we ever want to finish this achievement. And we're also level two, so we've got the more cohesion gain. So when we add vassals, we're going to grow back to max cohesion quicker. So we found a system down here, which is more than five jumps away. So we're going to go straight for that. We have a survey ship, and then we're going to spam colony ships because we need a lot that just gets sent across the galaxy. And we failed. We didn't block them in. It's not too bad because we're going to just be very far away anyway, but it's just a bit annoying. So there's two options from this Federation event. We're obviously not taking the minus influence option. Never click minus influence in this run through if you're playing along. Who cares what the other one is? Another one. We don't care about unity. Keep our influence. So the survey is complete, but it's going to cost us 210 influence it's worthwhile let's build the colony's moving in and we're up to plus five influence gain because we've got our max power projection traditions and our base so the planet can be settled because i did the anomaly but it's not letting us which is very annoying so in the meanwhile we'll just go survey these next planets because we're not gonna own this planet so it won't need to be five jumps away from it 107 to go over here which is very annoying and the planet 
blew up. This is not the great start that we all wanted. What I'm doing is having a fleet of construction ships follow each science ship to planets and then sending colony ships to where I'm going to settle eventually to try and be as optimal as possible. I can finally build over here. It was 367 influence but it's worth it. Influence is basically being converted into Federation XP gain and we can colonize our first planet slash vassal. Wait for it to colonize and we can have a vassal. So down here on this next planet we're going to need 23 more influence but it's not actually going to cost too much influence because we already have an outpost nearby so because we built up we can actually change the law to subjects can join just before we get our first subject so this is very nicely lined up we're going to need a few favors but it's fine they're going to accept dominations now finish and we're going to go galactic force projection max influence from power projection plus two yep that is literally the best thing we could get we're up to now seven influence a month this is beautiful we're also looking for the artisan troop unfortunately this wasn't them artisans will give us influence events which would be very nice yeah first planets established we can now come over to the planet create a new sector then we'll come over to planets and sectors then create a vassal randomize the name and then don't worry about changing contract the vassal will form and now we go up to eight xp a month from harmless accord so every vassal equals two xp spam them out as much as we can we do lose cohesion but this is going to grow quite quickly because we're getting the buff from being level two and it's just worth it in the long run we finally get a colony down here unfortunately the good planet has an anomaly but we don't care because it's not going to be our problem so go on this world that doesn't suit you. I didn't realize I could make Vassal next to another Vassal. I could have saved a lot of influence and you'll see why in a bit coming up. Our cohesion for the Federation is now maxed only after a couple of years and we're now up to 18 XP a month. There's no more traditions that really help us so we'll just grab whatever really. So we've got another sector and we can get another Vassal. We're up to plus 10 from Harmonious Accord. You see this sector? It's getting vassalized. Do you want to know why? Because they're not subscribed. And at 50k subscribers I'm going to stream getting the Galatron in one continuous stream until I get it. It's going to be painful but I have ideas to speed it up so make sure to subscribe so you can get it as quick as possible too. So here is where I've messed up. It's going to cost us 420 influence to learn that we can do a vassal next to a vassal. Federation level up. We are halfway there. The buffs are pretty much useless. 20 XP when we're at max cohesion though. Very nice. And then another sector can be set up down here. So we're going to try and add two vassals at the same time to see if our cohesion goes down more than normal. And here I figured out something very important. I'm going to try and build a star base before I make the other one into a sector as it costs only 52 influence. And then pause, then go and make that a vassal if we didn't also make it into a vassal the vassal will just get that system the construction ship doesn't stop building and doesn't cost you more so here we can create both into a vassal which lets us make a vassal next to a vassal and then we set up both vassals and the cohesion does go all the way down so if you had more than two vassals at the same time you wouldn't get more bad cohesion but it's fine we're going to build this up straight away as the more vassals we get the more delegates we also get so here was my game plan always build the next outpost that we're going to turn into a vassal before we turn the previous one into a vassal. This way we can make our influence so efficient. That community is here. There is more influence game if you become the custodian or emperor, but I don't think we're ever getting to that. So we're going to ignore it because resolutions take influence to set up. Max cohesion is now giving us 24 XP a month. We can pump this number up. I also forgot to do centralization. So we'll just skip straight to medium as we really want to get to strongest. This means we won't get dethroned if we don't do it before 40 years and we're going to upgrade our empty ships to auto best now that we have max power projection this will come into effect when we need to be the strongest for our federation we now have our next vassal set up we're going to focus down in the south mainly so that we can get our chain of outposts going another vassal we can also finally settle in the north so we might focus a little bit up here to get the chains going up there and another vassal 30 xp every month we now get plus 20 from the tradition 26 years in by the way we're halfway through level three and there are just so many planets over here the chains will be great and get delegate which gives us 0.5 cohesion gain every little helps for some reason the cohesion is just going absolutely crazy i have no idea why but who cares we're getting mass cohesion every time we add a vassal an event that gives us mass influence very nice we also should try and do all the first contacts that we see so we can get that influence boost when we find them. You could have maybe put more AIs on, but I don't think it's worth it for that influence gain. Another colony and vassal, and we found the shroud somehow by making a vassal. I don't know. We somehow have plus 24 and 25 at the same time. I don't know why it's fluctuating. I think it's very wrong here. All the numbers are just going up and down. I don't know what's happening. And we find the pacifism rocks. We're just going to improve relations with them because maybe eventually we'll be able to get them as a peaceful vassal. And then we need to find the evil one. And 
and then try and either war them or just be much stronger than them but they join us. There's sometimes hostiles in the systems. We can set a colony ship to passive so that we can then path them around the system. There's another one here and we'll try to go around them but uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Luckily there's already a colony ship that made it there so we can just colonize another planet. Another planet that can be a vassal and somehow that makes us find the artisan troop but we will take that. The artisans you want to come over do diplomacy with them, become their patreon and then they will give us events where we can take an influence option. We're now going to do every deal with the rock since our influence skin is actually so good that way we can build up trust with them so then we can vassal them just in case the evil declare war on them we can protect them and also we finished diplomacy so our diplomatic influence cost is reduced by 50 percent another vassal up here i do not even know how many vassals we have 11 we have 11 vassals this is insane 40 xp a month very nice so politics actually can give us more influence by assigning a person to the galactic community so we may as well do that another vassal and our federation just leveled up we're level 4 32 years in one more level 9600 xp to go we can now go to high federation centralization and we can vote on strongest and all our vassals vote with us and then we'll just use favors so that the others agree with us so it's sorted by fleet power and i'm only just above so we're just going to spend our mass alloys that we've been saving up on just building a bunch of ships they'll also be useful when we want to vassalize the evil empire that we spawned look at the amount of planets this is just vassal heaven at this point the vassals just keep coming and they don't stop coming so here is one of the patron newsletters that can just give you influence for energy we'll take that this is ridiculous 36 xp from our vassals the great thing is every vassal just gives us an embassy which gives us plus for unity so we're actually getting 72 unity from embassies here we've got the trust with the pacifism rocks and we can subjugate them it does cost influence but it's fine until they reject it we shouldn't have tried to take all their resources so we've just got the cost down by tweaking the contract down to 50 now our federation has a bunch of ethics mainly our ones almost the other three that we need hopefully the evil one did spawn i don't know why it wouldn't but this is stellaris i have found them and they're all the way up in the north i'll just spam improve relations because we don't need them to join in the speed run but we may as well set it up so that i could just do it straight away later on form all the packs so they build trust with us and then we'll just ignore them we also now have 19 vassals <laughs> yeah 53 xp a month we're getting up there they are currently minus 500 opinion to be vassalized but we could just give them all our tech and then they'd happily join there's no point doing it now because that's just going to hinder us so we'll just do it once we have finished our max federation now have 24 vassals now the percent gain on xp doesn't scale it's always plus two but we may as well just keep going because what else are we going to do we could just sit here and wait but i want to make it as quick as possible so we're going to change up some laws too because why not we'll do vote weight diplomatic new president's chosen on status change which was very dangerously close to potentially be losing the leadership president decides wars president decides invite members so now we're just basically in complete control this map is going to be so good to look at with all the vassals that i'm creating so just stick around to the end so that you can see it just as a reminder when you have a planet next to a system that you want to then make a vassal you need to construct just before you make a vassal then come over to planet and sectors create vassal your construct ship will keep building even though the vassal exists unfortunately we do have a massive cost over here but that will be fixed once this outpost is finished as we'll only be two systems away and here it is the most cursed map that you've ever seen <laughs> oh gosh we're so close 1300 xp away we're getting 73 xp total 63 from vassals we also find a wormhole that connects to evil so we're just going to construct there so that the distance from them is as low as possible i've somehow gotten max influence i don't even know how and our vassals will hate us but who cares they give us xp and with our max influence we can just take some resources from the pacifism rocks and here are the last few months and there we go we are number one be the leader of a max level federation it took us 46 years which is pretty decent i'd have to say now one more achievement let's vassalize evil and we don't even have to mess around with research they just love us now so let's just propose and for some reason they rejected it i don't even know why we'll just change it to tribute tree and there we go opposites attract have all eight ethics represented within our federation we no longer have to mess with federations in this achievement series as you can see we have a fair few ethics but the different ones are only from our created empires slow progress is being done we've got a fair few of the hard ones in the previous videos we're at 112 of 174 64 percent it's not bad but it's just painfully slow now if you did enjoy this video make sure to check out the playlist where i'm getting every achievement you can see how i get all of the different ones in unique and different ways like this